The secret to comparing two texts is to find common ground between them both. If the two texts you're going to read are both literature, then it's story elements that you will look at in both texts. Students will read text A, making specific notes of its setting, the problem and solution, character details, and even the theme and author message. Then, using those same facets of comparison, they read text B, making specific notes of its details. Now, if the two texts that students have to compare are not literature, but nonfiction, then the facets of comparison will be different, and they'll be a little more vague. You see, you have to actually read the text to determine their big ideas. While reading text A, the students are listening for big ideas or concepts that are revealed. And as they are, they make a note of them listing specific details, facts, and information for each. Then they read text B and they're listening for those same big ideas. Remember, we're looking for comparison points, something that both texts will address. When reading text B and any of those big ideas come up there as well, then the students are going to make specific notes in that far right hand column. We do want them to realize that the same big ideas will come up, but maybe not in the same order. So they have to be prepared to jump around that T chart. And it's possible that all the big ideas in text A do not all come up in text B. That's okay. It's just when it's time to write the comparison, we only address the common ground in both texts. Now I want to throw out a third scenario. What if the two texts are seemingly very different? What if one is literature, like historical fiction, and the other is informational text, a historical account of the same event? Or what if we read a sci-fi excerpt and a science-based textbook passage of a similar concept revealed in that sci-fi? Now, when looking at the details in the informational text versus the literature, we've got to consider what our facets of comparison are that are represented in both text types. Well, they both have people. Obviously, the literature has characters and the informational text probably has inventors, uh, explorers, famous people, or even organizations, cultures, or groups. In addition to making note of the people in both texts, we also want to take note of the setting, the when, the where. Think geography, think era, dates, mood, weather. All of that is good setting information for both text types. And finally, what is the event or action or invention or discovery that's being talked about? Again, we're looking for what's common in both texts, the literature and the informational text. Here's one more tip to teach your students. Take note that the informational text is in this first column. I would always have students read this text first, making note of the people, the setting and the events. Then they read the literature. Here's the rationale. Normally, when you compare two texts that are very different in genre, then the question is often, how does the literature stay true to the informational text? Is it accurate or is it not very realistic? Well, we read the informational text first. Why? Gives us a baseline. We get a baseline of facts in that far left column. Then we read the literature to see how true is it.